Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and on this very wet and soggy day in Southport at the Caravan and Motorhome Club site, I'm very excited, despite the weather, to bring you the first review of the Globe Traveller Voyager Z, the campervan that has just won 2023's Campervan of the Year Award. Look at it. Doesn't it look good? And normally at this stage, I'd want to tell you all about the extra high roof, the tailgate at the back, the fact that this is not just your typical 6.36 metre extra long or L4 H3 high roof Fiat Ducato, but because it's chucking it down, we'll leave that all till later in the video when hopefully it's stopped raining. And let's go straight inside and see what the inside is all about. Before we do get out of the weather though, one thing I can tell you about is that it has a roll-out awning as standard and I've actually rolled it out to give us a little bit of protection from this grotty day. Now, Globe Traveller, who are they? Globe Traveller is a Polish brand that's new to the UK, but it's not a new brand. They've been around for 10 years, well, just over 10 years. They actually started in February 2012 got a range of three models starting with the Explorer at £71,595. That's on a Peugeot Boxer. All the range are available on either Peugeot or Fiat chassis. If you go for the Peugeot you get the 165 bhp engine. If you go for the Fiat you get the top 180 horsepower engine as standard. This Voyager Z is the top model in the range and on a Fiat it comes to £90,595 or 92995 if you go for the automatic. Some little details to show you before we do reveal the interior though. A remote control to brighten or dim the awning light. A cupboard that you can get to from outside, perhaps if you're cooking outside, and also a table rail so you can use the indoor table outside. Not today maybe. And finally down here your waste water drain tap in an inboard location. Light and step switches just inside the door and of course it's an electric step. But then you might notice something about the floor level when you come inside. Yes this is a camper van with a double floor. Now, you'd normally see a double floor on an expensive A-Class motorhome, but here, yes, there's a double floor throughout the vehicle. So you've got the same floor height in the cab as in the living area, no steps anywhere in the living space. Not only, of course, is that much more convenient, so you haven't got cab seats higher than lounge seats or stepped floors to fall over, or anything like that, but you've got better winterisation thanks to the double floor. You've also got your fresh and waste water tanks in that double floor, 100 litres fresh and 85 litres for the waste. Brought some other neat details too. Fly screen on the door is fairly standard. But these handles, these straps, make shutting that sliding door, that big panel, so much easier. Up front, you could say that this is your typical continental camper van layout, but it is so much more than that because, well, these are the optional comfort seats and I'd thoroughly recommend them if you're going to use this Voyager Z to its full four berth potential. Why? Well, just look at them. They are high backed automotive style seats. More than that, they slide forward and each of them individually reclines. Now it's not a vast difference because you've got the washroom behind you, but it does add to your comfort, particularly if perhaps you want to have a little doze while you travel. And then, well, if it's two young children, you've got Isofix mountings on the seats as well. But if it's not two young children, if it's two larger children or adults, you can also slide the seats a little further apart. Gives you, I think, about another 140 millimetres of width. And this seat also slides forward 
and reclines. Other than that, you've got the usual swivel cab seats. Of course, they are both high back chairs in this same optional half leather trim, which is beautifully stitched. And then over on the wall here, you've got a couple of cup holders, USB ports, even somewhere for your phone to rest while it's charging and somewhere to keep a bit of reading material. This area, this upgraded area is a bit of a feature from the design package, again, another option, but I think you'll agree that although this van, as you see it, if you had it in right hand drive would be nudging a hundred grand. Well, it is a very premium camper van and actually a lot of other models are getting close to that sort of money now. So that's your lounging and traveling. What about dining? Where's the table? Well, for once, you can store it away safely for travel. So it won't become a missile if you have an accident. Here's your table rail, of course, in addition to the one outside. And the table itself stores in a bag in the double floor. Very neat. Then when it's in situ, the table is pretty much rock solid. And you've got this swing out extension leaf, so all four of you can reach your dinner. Ventilation, well, of course, you can open all the windows. You've got a big push-up roof light, not the more expensive wind-up type, in the ceiling above. You've got this neat Roman blind on the side window. Spotlights over the table and more spotlights in the ceiling, as well as an LED strip over the sliding door. And then this rather unusual orange floor level lighting as well. Headroom is exceptional in this vehicle. At the back end of the motorhome, it's 1.96 meters, six foot five. And at the front where the roof steps up, it's 2.11 meters or six foot 11. Now, if you're tall, you'll also like this offside single bed because that's also 1.96 meters or six foot five. However, I hope your partner isn't the same length or same height rather because the length of the near side bed is rather less. Um, five foot 11 or 1.81 meters and you have got to tuck your feet under this sort of curve where the bed just tucks under the end of the washroom. That said, this is a nice spacious bedroom. You've got cupboards all around, so lots of storage. You've got a little roof light above. And of course the beds, although this mattress is actually a fraction narrower than the uh, opposing one on the near side, it doesn't really matter because you've got this central infill anyway. So actually, at shoulder length, in fact, right down to knee length, you've got the full width of the vehicle for your twin beds. You've got ceiling lights going all the way around and then under here you've got these spotlights as well which are dimmable <laughs> opening windows on either side and you've got a tv position at the foot of the bed and a main socket over there i think there's usbs in the corner as well however i think you've spotted the downside haven't you and here's one of the few downsides in this vehicle. It's this. If you want to sit up to watch TV, well, it's not the most comfortable. It's such a shame they haven't fitted one of those tilting head of the bed systems that goes up on ratchets so you can comfortably sit and watch the telly. Hey, no camper van's perfect, is it? Before I move on from the bedroom, there are some other aspects that I should point out. For one, it has quite a coach-built motorhome feel about it, not like being in a camper van because there's no back doors, no rear windows, and it does feel more like a bedroom because of this design. Now, when you see the exterior, when it finally stops raining, you'll understand why. But this redesigned back panel that uh, Globe Traveller use on their Voyager models actually allows 12 centimeters of extra interior length without giving any extra length on the outside and that 
extra length can be seen in these rear corners where normally you'd have the doors coming across at, at this sort of level. So the extra space, of course, is welcome. And another aspect that's welcome is the very neat way they've hidden the wardrobe. Just under the middle of the bed there. You've got top access and a door at the front as well. And it's actually a decent size because, again, it drops down into the double floor. But you might be thinking, that's all very well, but I want a motorhome with a double bed. Well, then there's two options. You can go for a different model in the Voyager range, which has got a double bed, a French bed layout, lengthways with the washroom in the corner. Or you can stick with the Voyager Z, just slide out a panel across the end of this centre section here, slot in an infill cushion, and now you've got this huge double bed, 1.96 metres long on this side, 1.89 metres across the full width of the van. OK, yes, it's a bit shorter on that side, but this is a huge bed. Now, I said earlier on that the rear travel seats were so important because this is a four berth camper van. And the four berths are the reason for the extra high roof too. Now, you'd hardly know that there was a bed stored there, would you? This is one of the cleverest bits of design in the van. It just folds down. You need to retrieve this extra bit of mattress from above the cab and then a slide across the other bit of the bed frame and slot that last piece of mattress into position. It's a really good size bed up there. It's 1.87 metres long by 1.49 metres wide. That's six foot one and a half by four foot ten and a half. Now, those figures may be a little bit uh, misleading because the front of the roof, it curves away slightly. So this is a bed perhaps better suited to a couple of kids rather than adults. But it does add to the versatility of this van. It makes it a true family vehicle. You've got lighting up there. You've got USB ports up there. You've got the big roof light. And the only other thing I need to show you is the ladder, which you'll have to retrieve from the locker that goes into the garage. And this is one of the few things that I'm not so keen on in the Globe Traveller Voyager Z because, well, it's a very big and bulky ladder to store. But it does make for good access to the bed. The kids won't be calling social services on their mobile phones if you post them up there because they even have their own heater duct. The heating, by the way, is Truma Combi 6 gas and electric, so no complaints there. And also, if you do get the little ones to go to sleep, well, mum and dad can enjoy the lounge. You've still got plenty of headroom to sit downstairs underneath the snoozing darlings. The only thing I would change is that I'd like a luggage net here so you can keep the kids bedding in this over cab area without any fear of it falling out. If so far I've seen plenty of features that even after 40 years of motorhome testing I go wow that's good. Well the kitchen by comparison is quite ordinary. Yes you've got usual Dometic sink, two burner hob with ignition, plenty of good storage, lots of drawer space, all soft closing, nice deep drawers, that cupboard that you can get to from outside, cutlery drawer, albeit without dividers, good sized top lockers and gas struts for those doors, and then a 90 litre compressor fridge. I did find that that was slightly more audible than I expected at night, but no great shakes. Main socket up there, convenient for this bit of worktop. And of course, if you need more preparation space, the table's not far away. 
But yeah, it's a fairly standard camper van kitchen, just one that's very nicely built. So before I show you the external features, that just leaves the washroom and it has one final rather nice surprise. That's that you get a fully separate shower cubicle. Well, you didn't expect that in a camper van, did you? Yes, it's not huge, but it's perfectly adequate and so much better than sharing space with the loo that I'm currently sitting on. It's the usual Thetford cassette swivel bowl one. Alongside, decent wash basin, a little bit of worktop alongside, and a big mirror behind. All you could want in a van of this size. So, day three of this road test, and finally the weather's improved enough for me to give you a decent guided tour of the exterior of this Globe Traveller. And let's start with this roof, because now you can see how they've managed to incorporate that decent sized roof bed. Normal um, Ducato camper vans are considerably lower, 2.58 metres or thereabouts. This one is a full three metres high. Now it's based on the highest Ducato, um, that normally is about 2.88 metres, but with this extra section of roof that increases the height further still and gives you this neat little peak over the windscreen. So that's how they managed to not only transform the look of the van, but also give you that roof bed. And of course, further to the back, the roof level steps down and you've got those neat roof rails incorporated into the design. You've got the upmarket framed habitation windows, four 50 watt solar panels on the roof, 16 inch alloy wheels as standard, but the really interesting bit is at the back. Obviously the original Fiat doors are long gone and Globe Travel have completely redesigned this back panel. Here you can see where the extra length has been gained, but the bodywork, the new bodywork, and this is a lightweight composite panel, uh, the new bodywork doesn't stick out any further than the original Fiat Ducato bumper section, so it's still 6.36 metres long. The tailgate is linked to the central locking, and you wouldn't know it wasn't an original Fiat part. There's even a leather strap to close it again. Inside, well, you've got 12 volt and main sockets here, a light that goes right the way across, even somewhere to clip your awning winding handle into position. Dimensions, well, it measures 1.09 meters across, a maximum of about 860 millimeters long and then if you don't go into that cupboard under the end of the bed well it's a good 1.32 meters long so lots of space in there in that corner is your combi boiler it's truma combi 6 gas and electric boiler over on this side is your gas locker and on the off side you've got your 200 amp hour lithium battery that's included as standard as well And now it's time to go for a drive. But even this isn't standard fare because I don't start the engine with a key, I press a button, it's automatic of course, and the handbrake, well that's a switch on the dashboard and it comes off automatically as I pull away. So what's it like to drive the Globe Traveller? Well, of course, in many ways, it's just like any other Fiat Ducato panel van. But this one has the 180 bhp engine, the power engine, as Fiat calls it, as standard. That's the top spec unit and normally a very expensive option. So when you're comparing prices, do bear that in mind. Um, this one's got the nine-speed automatic gearbox, which is an option. Um, and you can have it on a Peugeot Boxer, which saves a little bit of money. But the spec is very impressive. You've got the digital 
display for the uh, instrumentation. You've got the 10 inch sat nav touch screen, which does your radio, all your usual bits and bobs on there. What else? Well, so this screen is also, of course, your reversing camera when you're actually reversing. But up here, what looks like a normal rear view mirror is actually the screen for another camera. So that one is showing you what's behind all the time, just like a, a normal mirror would, except of course, there's no through vision and no rear windows in this van. Cab seats are very comfortable. They've got height and tilt adjustment. They're half leather, as I showed earlier, high backed. I do just have a single armrest each though. But the single most impressive and important aspect of driving this Globe Traveller, listen, no rattles, not a single rattle. Lovely. So Globe Traveller is a name you probably don't yet know, but I think you're going to hear a lot more about this Polish brand. After all, it's a very worthy winner of Camper Van of the Year 2023. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed our latest video. Keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.